All right, guys, so let's move on to the file handling tab. Now, the first box we're going to see in the file handling tab is this import DNG creation. Uh, now, for most of you, this might not be extremely useful, but there are going to be some people that need DNGs. And what is a DNG exactly? A DNG is Adobe's version of the standard for RAW files. Basically, what they, they realize is that every single camera maker is making their own standards in RAW. And so to kind of improve compatibility and just create a standard, they made the DNG file format so that other pieces of software, like third-party pieces of software, could use strictly DNGs without having to support every single RAW extension from all these different cameras, like Nikons who use NEF and Canons who use CR2 files. So when you're importing with Lightroom, you can have it create DNGs on import so that you can use these files in other third-party applications. Now, if you're using strictly Adobe applications like Photoshop and Lightroom, uh, most likely you don't need to be creating DNGs. Uh, for those of you that are using third-party applications, you'll probably know if you need to or not, so you guys can make the decision on your own. Now, this first option, File Extension DNG, basically lets you choose whether you want to use lowercase or uppercase file extensions. There's no benefit to either, it's just a matter of preference. The compatibility you can set on import to, to create these DNGs to a certain version of Camera Raw. Say if your third-party application is only compatible with Camera Raw versions 4.1 and prior, then you can set that here. The next thing is a JPEG preview. When you're importing these, it'll actually render the preview sizes, the preview files. Um, now, if you set this to none, when you import, it's actually going to be faster. If you set this to medium size, it's going to be a little bit slower. And if you set this to full size, it's going to be quite a bit slower. Uh, the benefit to rendering these previews before you're actually working on the files is that when you're switching between files, there's not going to be any preview time, uh, pr kind of preview load time as the computer is actually rendering the previews. Because if you choose, like, say, full size, for example, well, when you import, it already creates those previews and you're done. And when you're browsing through, it's just loading the previews, basically. It's not creating them. Okay, now the next option is to create uh, I mean to embed an original raw file. Now what that does is basically if you select this it's going to take that original raw file from your camera whether it's a NEF or whether it's CR2 or, or some other third-party raw format and it's going to embed it into the DNG file. Now you can imagine what this does is it makes the DNG file quite a bit larger uh, but it also makes it so you can extract those raw files later if you actually need the raw file. So if you do work in DNGs I probably would recommend embedding the original raw file um, that's just for those of you that actually use DNG file formats. All right, now this next section on reading metadata probably isn't going to be useful for most of you as well. Um, basically, what this allows you to do is basically have Lightroom treat uh, these periods and these forward slashes as separators between keywords. And so it can kind of interpret the uh, keyword hierarchy that's used in other programs that you might have used in the past. Now, if you're importing directly from your camera and you're using Lightroom pretty much just on new photos, you're really not going to use this feature. Um, so you can kind of skip over it. But it is there in case you need it. Uh, the file name generation, again, for most of you, this isn't going to be too important. But what this does is the, f the first row of options, treat the following characters as legal, means that basically when you're importing, if files have these types of characters in them, it can create issues when you're when you're loading them into Lightroom. So basically what Lightroom says is you tell me which one of these you want to treat as illegal and it's going to replace them with legal characters that you, you're going to specify. You can specify right here. Replace illegal file name characters with dashes, underscores, or a similar character. So you can kind of choose which one you want. Um, and you can also specify that when a file name has a space, leave it as is, or you can have it replaced with an underscore or with a dash. Now again, for most of you, leaving this as default is is just fine. You're not really going to need it. For those of you that do need this feature, it is here and you'll know how you need to use it. So, all right guys, so let's move on to the camera raw cache settings. Now this is a huge feature for every single person, doesn't matter who you are. This is going to come defaulted to, uh, the location is going to come defaulted to your C drive, basically whatever drive you install Lightroom on. Um, if you have a second drive, the first thing you want to do is choose that next that second drive. Now I have on my computer a work in process. I call it my WIP drive. It's my work in process drive and that is a 10,000 RPM uh, Western Digital Raptor drive. Um, this will probably be replaced soon with a with a SSD drive to in, in, improve that efficiency and speed even more. Uh, but right now my work in progress drive is where I do all of my work and so I created a folder on there called LR Cache. This is where all of the cache files are going to be stored. The problem with leaving this on your C drive is that now Lightroom is basically using the same drive as Windows is using to operate 
your to, to run your operating system and so it's just going to slow down the program more by specifying a separate drive and in particular a faster drive Lightroom is going to benefit from being able to have sole use of that drive for the cache as well as if the drive is faster than your your local drive like my local drive is only a 7200 rpm whereas my whip drive is 10,000 rpm that's going to also speed up uh, Lightroom's caching efficiency all right so that's the first thing if you have a second drive set it to that and if you don't have a second drive I would really consider getting one Lightroom is going to benefit greatly from it uh, you'll see a big boost in speed from that okay the next thing is this is defaulted as your maximum size of that cache is defaulted to one gigabyte now what this means is when you're rendering previews and running Lightroom it's storing these previews and these files into that folder and that drive that you specify above and then it's also setting a limit on the total size the maximum size of that folder now one gigabyte might be enough for you guys if you're only say editing catalogs that have 20 30 40 images in them because each each one of these files depending on the amount of megapixels you're shooting at can vary from 8 megs to 25 30 megs if you're shooting at a really high megapixel resolution so if you have 30 to 40 images in a, in a catalog file you're already going to be kind of pushing that that one gigabyte limit now we actually on average our weddings have around three to four thousand images in them um, engagement sessions have around three to five hundred so I need a much larger cache so that it can load up I want Lightroom basically to load up that entire wedding catalog in my cache so that as I'm clicking through and browsing through my images and I'm making my edits everything's already saved in cache it's gonna load right away as opposed to having to wait for each image to render the preview okay so I set it to 50 gigabytes again if you're using say if your catalogs on average are like 100 m images then 5 or 10 gigabytes is sufficient as it gets larger and larger you need to set your your gigabytes as at a larger amount 50 to 100 is probably the max you'd want to go unless you're running catalog sizes that are like say 8 to 10,000 images which is actually slow anyway you really don't want catalogs to get that big alright guys so if you want to change the location hit choose if you want to purge your cache which is in my LR cache here I would just hit purge cache it will delete every single uh, cache file from there so it'll free up space okay let's move on to the interface